seat. Um, throttles over on the left, full throttles for the engine of course, air brake and um, parking brake on the, on the outboard side of it. Uh, nose wheel steering control in front there, there's nose wheel steering on it obviously. Uh, moving up you've got all the flying instruments in, immediately in front of the control column, the control yoke. Um, various other instruments, trim indicators, flat position indicators and the like across the front there. In the middle, the red and the green switches are the power flying control switches. So you've got, as I mentioned earlier, two independent systems per flying surface. One running off a port system, one running off a starboard system, so they're completely isolated systems. They're doing the same job for fail safe. Above that you've got the fire control panel, so the black and yellow um, area with the switches in it is the fire warning indicators and, and buttons for the engine bay fires. Moving over to the right of that, the circular thing uh, to the right of the uh, fire flying control switches is the undercarriage indicator, so that indicates when your gear's down ready to land. Moving down below that you've got all the engine instrumentation, the gauges in the middle there, you've got your RPM gauges at the top, exhaust gas te temperatures in the middle, and then the engine oil pressure below that, flap control lever in the middle, undercarriage selector above it, right in the middle of the panel. Moving down here, below, you've got the fuel control panel. So this is basically the fuel control panel that controls the fuel load of the aircraft. So the uh, co-pilot's responsibility is to look after that, and you can manage that to keep the trim of the aircraft in the right place, and also to provide fuel not only for the engines for flying the aircraft but for refueling other aircraft that want fuel okay, so when they come to tank. When you refuel, you refuel another aircraft, obviously the tank, as the tank empties out you've got to level out the... Yeah. What you've got is a thing called a proportioner. In each tank group, right on the left hand side there, where you've got the red and the green switch at the top there, the wing pumps. So you've got several different cells, several different compartments in each pump, each, each tank rather. So you've got tanks 1A, 1B, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6A, B, and C. There's a thing called a proportioner, which is a pump that, that's set up, so it draws a proportionate amount out of each tank, so they all Le deplete the at the same time. That's right, they all empty at the same time, or empty at the same rate. The idea being you haven't then got to individually manage every single tank. So it, it takes a lot of the, the work out of managing the fuel usage, if you like. Yeah. But you've still got to keep an eye on the, on the fuel load by the gauges at the top as to where the fuel is to keep the centre of gravity of the aircraft within limits. Yeah. So, um, and from this panel you can move fuel around the aircraft from, say, the wings to the bombays, from the bombay tanks to the fuselage tanks, um, to the hose drum unit for refuelling for other aircraft that want fuel, out to the wing. Uh, wing pods for refueling, so you can completely manage the uh, the fuel system from that panel, mm -hmm. and it's very versatile. And also, you've got facilities to, to refuel from the ground, of course, as well. So you can plug a tanker in to the outside. No, that's your autopilot panel, so you can set the autopilot to fly where you want to go. Um, various modes on that. And, uh, you can actually fly it by selecting. So all that whole panel in the centre panel is all to do with the fuel? Above, yeah, all that is fuel. The, so it shows you where you, all your galleries, so if this transfer had, pipes. If, it, if this aircraft was set for bomber configuration, you wouldn't have That wouldn't be that. there, no. The, there would be a small fuel control panel because you still, you've still got things on the wing tanks. Yeah. But I think that was probably over there on the, bom on the bombers. I don't know, I never saw the inside of a bomber. Okay. But this panel lifts up for uh, to allow the crew to get in and out. Oh, okay, I see. So, yeah. Yeah. Just drop that down again. Um, mm. Co pilot's seat. Um, 
again, throttles again on the on the side. Um, back panel here is all for hot air, for um, de-icing, anti-icing and the like of the aircraft. Um, all the different things that obviously get very cold at altitude need to be kept warm. And also for, for moving air around for things like starting engines um, and other services that need it. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is all control, all the electrics are controlled yeah, by up, up there. Yeah. In the, in the pod view and up there. That's right, all there. up in the planning chain. Everything's really rooted through there, or the vast majority of the route through there. Mm. Zero Two ejection Inject so Ejection. Okay. Yeah, this one you can only use at a forward minimum speed of 90 knots. Okay. They're disarmed anyway now, so there's no worries about sitting in them. And what you used to do when you used to get into the cockpit, the first thing you did was check this, take them out. Then. Check the seat pins are in, which make this make the seats safe. Okay. So you have that there, which goes through all the. They're called sears. They're like a little pin that goes through a, um, a mechanism. It's like a trigger almost, or a hammer. Yeah. And when you pull that sear out, the hammer goes down, strikes the cartridge, and sets sets the cartridge off to operate the um, the seat. You should have one up here as well, the face blind. That's not there, and also one in the seat pan handle, which is down there. Just makes it all safe, plus others dotted around various things. Canopies above the above the seats. These can either be jettisoned separately, or when the, when the seat is fired, they'll go off automatically. And there's a series of um, jacks. There's two gas-operated jacks here and one over there, and the latch mechanism at the back with a series of rods that go around some locks all the way around the canopy. So when it's needed to be ejected or, or, or removed. Um, the cartridge is fired, which directs gas to the. That's the cartridge there. No, not there. The cartridge is down in the seat down. Okay. In fact, it's under there. Um, fires gas to the locking mechanism, it unlocks the hatch, and then the gas goes down these pipes to these jacks, which blows the front of the canopy up into the airflow, and then the airflow catches it and takes it off. Okay. So it uh, leaves the aircraft. Thank you.